Hello everyone, this is the video presentation presented by Group A. Our topic is food adulteration in milk. Our lecturer is Dr. Muhammad Afi. Now, let me introduce our group members. They are Roy Kwa Zuming, Esther Xia Xinyue, Qi Fei Wen, Li Min Xing, and I, Lu Chai Wei. Next, this is the content of our video presentation. Okay, so first of all, I will present about the chapter 1, which is Introduction. Food adulteration refers to a food product's inability to fulfill hygiene regulations in order to maximize revenues. It occurs widely and in a variety of forms, affecting nearly all food commodities. The process of reducing a given food to cause harm by adding the adulterant or removing important substances is the concept of food adulteration which also can be referred to as food fraud. A food product is deemed adulterated if the essential ingredients are eliminated or replaced with other constituents. Food adulteration can take numerous forms which include mixing, replacing and disgusting the quality. Adulterated products can lead to poisoning in the body as well as diarrhea, vomiting, infections, renal failure and more serious which is death. Next, Adulteration may be classified into three categories, which are intentional adulteration, incidental adulteration, as well as metallic adulteration. First, the intentional adulteration is where the adulterants are intentionally introduced with the goals of increasing profit, where food systems are purposefully harmed in order to create a broad public health risk. This is known as deliberate or intentional adulteration. Next. When adulterants are discovered in food as a result of carelessness, ignorance, or lack of adequate procedures, it refers to incidental adulteration. This could occur when a dangerous or harmful material is inescapable. For metallic adulteration, it occurs when metallic substances such as arsenic, lead, and tin are purposely or unintentionally introduced. For example, the mercury containing fish may lead to brain damage paralysis, and death. So, it is pretty frequent to hear or read the news about food products being adulterated, and such goods are freely distributed and consumed by people, posing a variety of health risks nowadays. There were a lot of cases that related to food adulteration occur globally, especially milk adulteration. Milk is an excellent and inexpensive source of nutrients, and it is consumed by people of all ages. It contains a significant quantity of lipids and protein, as well as bodybuilding vitamins, lactose, and many other nutrients, making it a great diet, especially for newborns. Milk is necessary for maintaining health and regular growth of the body. Nevertheless, milk is readily adulterated everywhere across the world, with the situation being substantially worse in undeveloped and developing nations due to a lack of sufficient surveillance and law enforcement. However, milk adulteration is a typical type of food fraud that has become a major social issue in recent years. Hence, in this report, we mainly focus on the incident for the adulteration of natural milk with various illegal substances added. Next, I will continue on the sample and chemical found in the incident. For milk adulteration, the inclusion of skim milk powder, water, the removal of fat, detergent and tinkerny agent such as starch, flour, glucose, urea, salt and chlorine are the most common adulterant found in the milk and milk products. Preservatives such as sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, hydrogen peroxide and calcium hydroxide are commonly used as a neutralizer, while animal fat, aflatoxin and vegetable oil are all ready. The first adulterant is detergent. Detergents are used to emulsify and dissolve the foreign fat from the non-milk origin, resulting in a fruity solution with a milk-like white color. Due to their low cost and simplicity of availability, anionic detergents are most commonly employed in milk-like formulation. Detergents can induce gastrointestinal problems and also food poisoning. The second adulterant is urea. The maximum permissible amount for urea in milk is 70 mg per 100 ml. According to the FSSAIN 2006 and the PFR rules 1955, urea is added to milk to ensure whiteness, to make it more consistent, and to even out of the level of solid non-fat 
the naturally occur in milk. Consequently, the kidneys are overburdened by urea in milk because they must filter out more urea from our body. Apart from this, the urea above the cut-off limit in milk can also cause indigestion, ulcer, and also cancer. Furthermore, hydrogen peroxide is also one of the adulterants of milk. The oxygen-rich substance helps inhibit or delay the appearance of microorganisms. Nevertheless, the addition of hydrogen peroxide to milk is not permitted in the United States. This is because peroxide can damage the gastrointestinal cell, which can cause a more serious problem, which are gastritic and also inflammation of the intestine. Although hydrogen peroxide can prolong the supply of milk. The next adulterant is starch. The addition of starch can increase the solid content and reduce the presence of fat in the milk. Other than that, when milk is watered, it loses density and viscosity. This problem can be recovered with the addition of thickening agents such as starch. The effect of undigestion starch in the colon can cause diarrhea. The accumulated starch could be dangerous for the diabetes patients. The last adulterant is carbonates and bicarbonates. They act as neutralizing agents to mask the acidity in milk that have been formed during the process. The consequence of taking carbonates and bicarbonates in milk are that is, they will lead to the gastrointestinal complications such as colon ulcer, gastric ulcer, and also diarrhea. Hi, I'm Roy, and I'm going to talk about the sample preparation method in order to prepare the milk sample for the analysis of adulterant in milk sample. So, these sample preparation methods are actually crucial to remove sample matrix and to pre-concentrate the sample in order to get a better analytical result. We'll be looking at some of the many methods to prepare the milk sample. So the first method is matrix solid phase dispersion or MSPD in short. As we all know that milk sample is a colloid suspension of fat and lipid, MSPD method is actually effective to prepare this type of sample for the analysis of pesticide as it will actually retain the fat and lipid of the sample after completion. MSPD actually uses the porous structure such as the diatomaceous earth or x which allows the solvent to penetrate the matrix and single out the analytes. So matrix used are like C18 bonded silica, sodium sulfate or hydromatrix. Okay, so it is also eluted with tiny amount of solvent and uh, the solvent material can be added to the matrix before being packed into a mini column and finally eluting the analytes which are similar to that of SPE. Although this method has proven to be effective as it uses tiny amount of solvents, but this method can be hard to automate and it is time consuming if a lot of samples are involved. Besides that, further cleanup steps might be required most of the time with samples of very fatty matrices, which adds up to the steps required. Moving on to the next method, we have solid phase extraction or SPE in short. So SPE is actually suitable for the sample preparation of milk to analyze the pharmaceuticals, content, aflactosin, M1, and also pesticide, but depends on the sorbents or the media used. As we all know, SPE is actually a method using the liquid solid partitioning technique. So by using a solid sorbent extracting phase, the trace organic materials from the liquid samples or the solutions are removed and concentrated. So as you can see here in the diagram, one step is actually missing before the loading, which is the conditioning step, which actually conditions the solid sorbent state into a desired state for the separation of the analyte and also the matrix. So after we have conditioned the uh, SPE system, we will be loading in the sample and then the washing using the uh, solvent and finally eluting out the analyte that we need. So these are the standard steps of solid phase extraction. As we mentioned earlier, using different type of sorbents or media 
in this case restricted SS media RAM and also the immunosorbents actually targets different type of analytes. For restricted SS media, it is actually for the biological samples in order to test for the pharmaceuticals in milk samples. However, if we are using immunosorbents, we are actually testing for the pesticides. Even though this method is highly specific with different kind of functionality depending on the sorbent, it has some disadvantages as it will require a very uniformly packed column to ensure a good efficiency and also the sample metrics may affect the extraction ability of the sorbents. Besides that, it is also impractical for one-off analysis due to the need for the initial analysis and it also have possible low recovery due to the matrix affecting the interactions. Next, we will look at Headspace SPME or Solid Phase Micro Extraction. This method is a sample preparation method which does not require any solvents. The apparatus used consists of a fused silica tube which is coated with the suitable stationary phase depending on the sample and the analyte. The tube is then attached to a modified micro syringe. This method coupled with the static headspace method is used for the sample preparation of milk samples for the analysis of phthalate esters. The volatile components are trapped in the SPME fiber in the headspace above the sample after heating to the desired temperature. This method is dependent on the fat content of the milk sample which also uses the standard addition and internal standard approach for the quantitation process. Besides that, it is also very dependent on the temperature as the high temperature will make the volatile analytes favor the volatile phase which will result in less deposition onto the fiber. Last but not least, we are looking at the other conventional methods. So, for most of the analysis involving HPLC, the samples are homogenized before mixing with the DNPH solution and heated to the desired temperature, for example 70 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes which is then centrifuged to separate the sample into two solid and extract aliquot layers. The aliquot layer is filtered through a membrane filter before going into the HPLC column. Another method follows the following steps which is to stir the milk which includes the bottom layer of the milk with no less than 5 minutes before undergoing sampling. Careful treatment is undergone to avoid foaming and excess cream was removed using filter paper. When transferring to the apparatus for analysis, heating was required if fat was found on the walls of the apparatus and cooled before the analysis. However, for most analysis, unless there are big particles which need to be filtered, the milk sample was unprocessed before undergoing the analysis process. So for most of the conventional uh, analysis, these conventional methods of preparation is actually uh, more efficient and effective. However, it requires manual labor which may include human errors. And careful treatment is required to prevent the foaming. So, as a summary for this subtopic, the sample preparation depends on the target analytes and also the analysis method. So for different sample uh, analysis, we use different sample preparation. For example, like HPLC, we might be using the conventional methods. As for the pesticide analysis, we propose to use MSPD over SPE, as SPE might have low recovery due to the fatty matrix uh, influence. For conventional methods, we think that these standard procedures could be more effective and efficient for conventional practices. That's all for me, thank you. We'll move on to the sample analysis method. The next part is sample analysis method. From the incident review, a standard milk adulteration kit from High Media Laboratories was due to detect different adulterants present in milk. Adulteration testing of milk is designed for the detection of common 17 milk adulterants such as urea, starch, detergent, and hydrogen peroxide. The kit is economical and suitable for large-scale as well as households. 
Another case study on milk adulteration was conducted using milk adulteration test kit from NICE chemicals to evaluate the presence of detergent, urea, hydrogen peroxide, and other contaminants. As a result, the testing kit successfully detects all the milk samples containing detergent and urea, and 80% of the milk samples were diluted with water. Next, there are several quantitative detection methods for detecting adulterants which can be categorized as chromatography and spectroscopy based. A combination of chromatography and spectroscopy technique has also demonstrated a high potential for the detection of adulterants. Firstly, HPLC with diode array detection is an indirect method for the determination of hydrogen peroxide in cow milk. The amount of triphenyl oxide formed after the reaction of hydrogen peroxide with triphenyl phosphine is used to perform an indirect quantitative evaluation of hydrogen peroxide. Secondly, GC is a technique for the identification of adulterants to separate volatile organic compounds. The coupling of GCMS or GCFTIR are performing well in the food sector to replace less efficient and more time-consuming methods since they are non-destructive to the sample. Thirdly, NIR spectroscopy helps in the rapid detection of adulterants in raw materials but is unable to identify the contaminant. Although it cannot compete in sensitivity with techniques like GCMS, it is sufficient for screening economic adulteration to achieve detection limits of roughly 1000 ppm with no sample pretreatment. Last but not least, NMR spectroscopy can detect adulteration with structural identification of the contaminant. The rapid growth of this method in food analysis and quality control is due to instrumental stability and the low cost of commercial benchtop NMR system with permanent magnet technology. With respect to their selectivity, GC is the most sensitive instrument to detect male adulteration, following by HPLC, NIR, and NMR. Lastly, the presence of common adulterants in milk can also be detected rapidly through qualitative detection methods. The identification result from this technique is based on chemical reaction with observation of color appearance. The experiments are simple to perform in any biosafety level 1 laboratory with the availability of chemicals reagents and proper precautions. However, they are only valid for a limited range of concentration and the result may be imprecise. Hi, I am Esther and I will proceed with the purpose of sample preparation and analysis framework. As mentioned above, there are several different types of methods to prepare the milk sample to be compatible with the analysis when using different instruments. Hence, the sample preparation is chosen according to the equipment used so that it is suitable and will not destroy and damage the instrument. In this proposal, we would like to use FTNIR for the analysis of the adulteration of milk. According to the methods for the milk sample preparation from the team of Conti Hall, the milk used was collected randomly from career trucks and it is stored under refrigeration until use. The milk collected from each truck was subsequently divided into 1 liter samples to receive adulterants at different concentrations. 3 or 6% water was added to each 1 liter milk sample and the adulterant compound were added to be analyzed. These adulterated milk samples were analyzed 25 times. While as for the sample preparation that needs to be analyzed using HPLC, HSSPME was proposed to prepare the milk sample. By modifying the method used by the team Shamal, 2 ml of milk was added into 1.5 ml of distilled water and diluted milk was incubated at 60 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Then, aqueous potassium ferrocyanide, aqueous zinc acetate, and isotor nitrile was added. The contents were generally mixed and then cut undisturbed for 1 hour at room temperature. The precipitate obtained was removed by centrifugation. 
the resulting supernatum containing the extracted adulterants was then filtered through nyro membrane and 20 microliter of this final clarified extract was injected into the HPLC system for analysis. Since there is abundance of instruments that can be used for the analysis of food adulteration, we would like to suggest the most efficient and highest price performance ratio method for the analysis. First and foremost, we would like to have the FTNIR as our primary equipment. With just one measurement, it is frequently easy to analyze a large number of distinct parameters. Since FTNIR spectrometers can analyze both liquid and solid samples, hence milk, which is our sample, is suitable to be analyzed by these two as it is non-destructive. Besides, FTNIR offers a fast and simple tool for the analysis of a wide range of raw materials, intermediate and finished products in the food industry. It can provide high sample throughput and real-time analysis in process monitoring. The information about the molecular and physical structure of the sample can be accessed to analyze the composition through NIR spectra. As no sample preparation is required to enable FTNIR spectroscopy for analyzing the sample, thus, no waste was generated and this is environmentally friendly also lead to cost effective. Commercial FTNIR equipment that can scan the whole middle infrared spectrum was used to conduct the investigations. The spectra were collected, exported and put into digital files. Utilizing standard samples, prior calibration for the milk composition characterization was assessed. All of the calibration parameters, including the standard error, standard error calibration, determination coefficient, and calibration feature sloop intercept, will be automatically calculated in order to optimize the performance of the equipment. The sensitivity, which is the capacity to correctly identify adulterated samples, and the specificity, which is the capacity to correctly identify unadulterated samples, were determined in order to assess the accuracy of each calibration for the detection of adulterated milk. Furthermore, despite HPLC and GC depends on the same principles and analysis, HPLC was preferable over GC because it can handle any soluble compound regardless of volatility which in this case is more suitable for milk analysis. Besides, HPLC machine has smaller columns and overall smaller size than GC. HPLC is usually quick as it uses a pressure pump while the GC relies on the temperature which requires an oven to build heat over time. Not only that, HPLC can analyze larger and less stable compounds since they do not expose the sample to high temperatures. The chromatography software was utilized with a commercially available HPLC that was equipped. A 65 to 35 ratio of acetone nitride to water was used as the isocratic solvent system with a flow rate of 1 ml per minute and the column and RI cell temperatures were kept at 35 degrees Celsius. The determination of retention time and relationship between adulterant concentration and peak area was done. To eliminate dissolved gases, the adulterant standard and milk filtrates were sonicated. These were then loaded into the manual injector for analysis. Milk was tampered with known concentration of adulterant standard and the recovery was calculated in order to validate the HPLC RI method used for the detection and quantification of adulterants. The peaks in the chromatogram were compared with the solvent peak to ensure the determination of adulterants. The amount of the adulterants in the milk sample can be determined using the recovery test. In short, HPLC benefits in fast analysis, high-resolution separation, 
reduce solvent and sample usage, and enhance sensitivity and precision performance. In conclusion, the adulteration that has been added to food products may have a significant impact on our health without our knowing. Adulteration can be avoided if our community takes a few precautionary measures. Consumers should avoid purchasing products from establishments that do not meet adequate hygienic standards. Government agencies should audit both local and branded food stores. This study should raise the public awareness regarding malpractice or neglect in milk production, especially in a nation like India where milk and milk derivatives play a vital part in a variety of meals. That's all from Group 8. Thank you for listening.